Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be looking at a very interesting polearm. It is uh, called Grimm's Burning Dead. And uh, if you can't tell by the plus three to necromancer skills, this scythe was specifically made for necromancers, uh, which is kind of odd. Um, it also comes in an ethereal version, and, uh, and it is a Grim Scythe, which means that if you were to upgrade this, you would end up with a, uh, a very nice giant thresher. Um, and we're going to do that, but to not right this second. Um, so first off, let's go over the statistics of this particular item, and, uh, and let's talk about the effects. So right off the bat here, we have plus three to Necromancer skills, which is, uh, is probably the most glaring piece of information um, bar none. Um, it, it's, it just really solidifies the item as a necromancer item. And, uh, and this is important because, you know, it, it, I wouldn't think it's a necromancer item without that effect. I really, I really would not. So, so you look at this, uh, this plus three to necromancer skills and you're like, okay, well that's, uh, that's, that's, kind of cool, I guess. I can throw it on my Necromancer and get plus three to Necro skills. Am I actually going to run around and, and smack anything with this thing? I don't think so. <laughs> but I mean, you could. There, You could. You very well could. And um, the strength and the dex requirements are really low at 70-70, so they obviously had this in mind for a Necromancer. Um, and, and if you look there at the negative 50% requirements, it's obvious that they had, uh, had put a little bit of thought into a Necromancer wielding a scythe. Um, there's also a, uh, only a level 45 requirement to the item, so it's, uh, it's, it is relatively low. So if used at, at level 45, it might actually be somewhat decent. Um, we also have a uh, enhanced damage on here to increase the amount of damage that it does from 140 to 180%, so it is a 40% variable on the damage. Uh, we also have negative targets defense of 50%. So they were thinking about the fact that the Necromancer is going to have trouble hitting things. Um, you know, uh, they, he's going to have crappy attack rating, so he's going to need less defense on the target. So they put some thought into this item. Uh, we also have 250 to attack rating, so it gives us even more attack rating, which is certainly very nice. We've got uh, 131 to 232 fire damage. It's nice to have a little bit of elemental damage on an attack. Um, the attack rating does vary, by the way, between 200 to 250. Uh, not a huge variable there, but it definitely would be nice to have the higher one, since you're a non-melee class. 20% <laughs> enhanced defense, which is just going to be a nice flat bonus to the defense. As you see here, I'm 1,461. And when I take it off, I go down to 1,218. So a uh, nice little boost to defense there. So again, they were thinking about the fact that this item could be used on a Necromancer, and the Necromancer would need defense. He would need attack rating. He would need negative targets defense. They put some thought into it. We also have fire resistance, 45%. not exactly sure why that's there. Uh, attacker takes damage of 8, and requirements, negative 50%. Now, it is important to note that if you put this on a mercenary, the mercenary will not be able to wield the item if he does not have the um, required statistics for the actual Grim Scythe. Um, and the same goes for the, um, for the Elite version, which is the Giant Thresher. Um, it might sound kind of silly, but for some reason or another, um, negative requirements does not work on a mercenary. It will let you equip the item if the negative requirements brings the requirements down below the strength or the dex of the particular uh, mercenary. But the problem is, is that for some reason or another, when it's actually on him, it does like some other check, and then the item turns red, and it doesn't let him wield it. Um, almost like if I take off equipment, you know, like if I had some plus strength equipment or something that was allowing me to use this, and I take it off, the item would turn red, and it would just sit there, and I, I wouldn't actually be able to wield it. Um, I don't know why that is specifically with uh, with mercenaries, but i um, not really sure why you put this on a mercenary anyway. Um, aside from the negative 50% targets defense, there's really not a lot going for it for mercenaries specifically. And um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to upgrade this, and um, and we're going to play around with uh, play around with it. So um, so first off, we have the ethereal version, and then we also have the uh, the non-ethereal version, and I have uh, some items here, specifically for this upgrade. And we're going to take a look and see what this is like 
um, in its giant thresher form. Um, I feel like if we're going to show off unique items, the one thing that we've got to do is we've got to upgrade them and really show them off and they're in their highest form so that we can get a good appreciation for what kind of damage they would do if we had turned these into a serious item. Because if you were going to build a necromancer around the scythe, you wouldn't leave it as a grim scythe. No, no, no. You would upgrade it to the giant thresher and then you would get a better idea of the kind of damage that it does. So let's upgrade the uh, non-ethereal version first. And you'll see here we're looking at 112 to 319 damage. So not terrible. The level requirement did go up to 73 and uh, the strength requirement went up to 94. So not bad. And we're going to upgrade the ethereal version as well. So the ethereal version went up to 168 to 478 damage. And, uh, and it's not bad. It has slightly lower requirements, of course, because it is ethereal. So it's 10 less. So it's 60 and 84 versus 70 and 94. Uh, the damage isn't super duper duper amazing. But these weapons do tend to be very, very fast. And uh, and the other interesting thing is that the Grim Scythe and the Giant Thresher uh, both have a very high range. So they are uh, they are a range 5 weapons, or plus 4 weapons. And, um, and range 5 weapons can hit from very, very far away. Which is actually going to be very useful, because if you were running an army, you would probably want to uh, stand behind your army and poke them from a distance as opposed to, uh, you know, getting in there and, uh, and, and, and messing up your hair. <laughs> um, let's play around with it, shall we? And let's see what kind of damage he can put out. Whether he can hit anything at all. Uh, of course, I've got negative resistances here. I'm probably going to end up dying. It would probably be helpful if I actually had some attack rating and stuff, you know. Uh, let's go play around with some little Act 1 monsters, and, uh, <laughs> and we'll see if they kick our butts, too. Not exactly terrible. It's not terrible. I could see maybe this being augmented with uh, with an army, you standing behind the army, maybe give you something to do, run in there and you know, whack some things every now and then. Uh, maybe build up a little bit of attack rating. Uh, maybe some crushing blow added in, like a Gillum's face or some some uh, some gore riders, perhaps. So you get some crushing blow and some deadly strike. And um, I don't know. I mean, uh, it could be just something fun that you could do. Uh, you know, and and people would be like, "Is that a necromancer with a scythe?" And you could just have a little bit of fun with it. Um, as you can see, my damage with the uh, non-ethereal version isn't the absolute greatest, 521 to 1,376. And the ethereal version is only slightly higher, with 689 to 1,853. Um, now, granted, if you were going to use the ethereal item on an actual character, you'd have to throw a Zod rune in it. Um, and uh, if you were going to use the non-ethereal one, you'd probably want to throw uh, a Shale or a 15% IAS jewel or something in there, because it's... It's fast, but it's not really, like, that fast, as you can see. So, a little bit faster might be nice. Um, what else is there to talk about with this particular item? Um, I mean, non-necromancer uses. Um, like I said, the uh, negative 50% requirements kind of makes it hard to use on a mercenary. They have to hit the uh, the actual real requirements for the item, not the, not the negative 50% requirements. Um, I don't really see any reason to upgrade this for a non-necromancer, just simply because it doesn't really have a lot of amazing effects. Like, it doesn't have ITD or Crushing Blow, there's no Life Steal, uh, there's no Open Wounds, there's no, uh, no Deadly Strike. Um, you know, just in general, it just doesn't really have a lot of the, the more amazing effects going for it. Um, I mean, if a necromancer were to use this, it would be specifically for the plus three necromancer skills and the fact that it would it is a melee weapon specifically geared toward a necromancer. I mean, it's, it is specifically made for a character who has very little strength and very little dex, and it's made for a character who has very little attack rating because of the negative 50% target's defense and the 250 plus 250 to attack rating. Um, I suppose you could always put an eth rune in there um, to make it negative 75%. Um, defense, and then then you could have a, uh, a rather large negative defense, so you could just make sure you're hitting your targets. 
Um, I feel like a shield rune would ultimately be better just so that you could attack faster. But, uh, I mean, if you were going to be a melee necromancer, you might have some some, uh, some IAS gauntlets um, and some various other pieces of equipment that might increase your attack speed like, uh, like I have. I just realized I'm wearing uh, a 20% gloves and High Lord's Wrath, and, uh, and that is increasing my speed quite significantly. Let's uh, go out and test this one more time without those two items on, shall we? So, considerably slower. It's certainly fun to watch an Ekromancer run around and beat things. Just a little bit of theory craft, because why not? Um, if you were to build a melee necromancer, I imagine that you would probably go with uh, bone armor, because obviously that is a way that you could absorb a pretty massive amount of physical damage. Um, also, you could go with corpse explosion, so that every time you kill a target, you could launch a corpse explosion and do massive amounts of damage to everyone nearby. I mean, why not? Um, you could also augment yourself with some various other effects, like for instance, um, you would have uh, definitely some curses and things that you could use. So if I were to uh, bring out Amplify Damage and try the same thing on some of these monsters, I feel like this would go a lot faster. So, uh, so let me just go ahead and throw some Amp up. And, uh, and now you can see we're doing, uh, we're doing some pretty nice numbers here. Um, if we were to throw in some things like Deadly Strike, perhaps, uh, maybe... Um, some open wounds, some crushing blow, and uh, and various other effects. I could see this actually doing a little bit of damage, um, especially if we throw on the gauntlets, the High Lord's Wrath, and we can attack faster. It's actually not terrible. Uh, we'd have to keep our uh, bone armor up, of course. Let's go see if we can get a rematch on these guys now that we're uh, we're bone armored up. Of course, you can recast Bone Armor as many times as you need to. That's the important thing about Bone Armor. <laughs> These guys handed me my butt. Because, of course, they're Fury, uh, they're Fury characters. They attacked it faster and faster. Now, let's, let's see with a, uh, a Clay Golem, shall we? Get my Clay Golem in there. Let's get some Amp running. I definitely need some faster hit recovery. Um, oh, with them distracted, I can certainly wail away. No life steal, no mana steal. I'm really not doing a lot here as far as, uh, as anything going on. Uh, without the amplified damage, it doesn't really even do enough damage to even tickle their buttholes. <laughs> But, uh, but you know, it's working, and this is not a character that's geared toward this specific purpose. So, uh, it, it's interesting. Um, and, you know, I love to make characters specifically around interesting concepts. And, uh, and a melee necromancer is certainly one of them. And I might have to eventually make a melee necromancer. We shall see. Um, where can you find this particular item? Um, this particular item will drop just about everywhere. Uh, the TC class of this item is relatively low. Um, it's I think it's like 50. Uh, let me let me look it up real quick just to be sure. Yes, 57. So it's a TC class 57, which means it's going to drop everywhere in uh, in Nightmare, um, Act four to five, all the way up to uh, Hell Act five. So you're going to get this from just about every monster in Nightmare Act four to five, and it'll probably drop from Mephisto as well. So, uh, so Nightmare Mephisto, probably uh, Diablo, most likely Bale. Um, all the monsters pretty much from Act 4 to Act 5 in Nightmare Difficulty, you'll, you'll find this particular item. Um, is it the best item in the world for Necromancer? Probably not. Is it a uh, fun item that you could build a character around? Yeah, it definitely is. And, uh, and you could play around with the whole idea of a melee Necromancer. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and... Uh, Keep watching.
Pra tu não é nóis! Pra tu não é nóis! Você diga, amor?